Okay, Richie Lewis, the Savage. We're going to talk real quick. We're going to talk street leagues. Richie is a world champion. And Richie, <laughs> world champion, U23 world champion, right? Yes, sir. In freestyle. So First. First ever. First ever, because it was because it was it was university nationals, and you were the first U twenty three, right? Yeah, and uh, behind me, number two, Mister Bo Nickel. You know he's always behind me. So okay, Bo Nickel. Hey, have you watched any of Bo Nickel's fights? Yeah, he just starts that dude. Yeah, he's he's physically a good mutant dude. He's got really good hands too. Really good hands. How are your hands, Richie? How are your hands doing? How's fighting going for you, man? Man, they're looking pretty good, man, you know? Well, that's always the thing, man. You got wrestlers that sometimes struggle transitioning because punching's, you know, normally you're just grinding people into fodder, getting on top of them, turning them, riding, right? Like, that's the biggest thing has been the jump for a lot of guys. Bo Nickel, obviously, has got hands like Cormier had hands. Uh, Johnny Hendricks had hands. We've had a lot of guys transition over with really good hands, so – I like that. Um, what what uh, promotion are you currently fighting with? Uh, Titan FC out of Miami, Florida. Okay. So Titan FC is um, – uh, first off, everybody that I talked to, because I talked to Ryan Lang. Ryan Lang was an NCAA finalist for Northwestern, a couple-time All-American. He's a four-time state champ here in Ohio. And he had this perception that he had to be in the UFC. He's like, oh, yeah, it was UFC or bust. How flawed of a mentality is that? Uh, it depends on what your goals are. What are uh, your goals? I'm going to be a UFC world champion. But it's you not know, UFC or bust, right? I mean, it's world champ or bust. You know, it just, ha- it just so happens that UFC is the organization that the, the best athletes put themselves in. And I want to prove that I'm the best athlete. So that's the organization that I'm going to go to. But beyond that, you know, it's, it's more than just UFC. And I want to continue to wrestle this like a wrestling in and people think this match is just like oh he's gonna he's coming to wrestle it's gonna be fun yeah it's gonna be real fun but you know i actually want to get back in there and, and compete wrestling when i'm done done doing my ufc stuff i want to box i want to do brazilian jiu-jitsu i'm a combat athlete and uh and yeah so ufc or bust kind of but but nah it's gonna be ufc world champ and then and then we're gonna figure the rest out you fighting at 55? I'm fighting at 55 currently, yeah. So when you go to 55, it's it's kind of like you're, when you won U23s, it's a 24-hour win. It's even a more than a 24-hour win, right? Yeah, like thir- like 24 to 36. I was going to say, it's like it's like almost becomes a 36 because the pr- when you become on the main card, like you're going to, in my opinion, when you get on those main cards, you guys weigh in the, the day before at like 10 a.m. Sometimes yeah. you guys don't fight until midnight or something, right? Exactly. The next day. So it's good, man. I walk around uh, around 173, 174. So. The stalemate's weight is 170, right? 170, yeah. Yeah, so it's no cut for either one of you guys because I think Ian weighs about 175. You weigh a buck 73. Dude, it's going to be a good match. I'm really fired up about it. Um, I know. Talk about... <laughs> Go ahead. Good. I've talk always been a fan of Ian, man. I, yeah, but talk about what happened with Stalemates and Zach Bogle. Zach Bogle's the guy who who runs Stalemates, and Zach does a great job of promoting events. This is their third one, Street League. June 24th, you guys are the main event. You versus Ian, but the first main event was you versus Alex Marinelli. Do you have any insight as to what happened? Why Alex Marinelli didn't want to meet you at 170 pounds? Was it an injury? What happened with Alex Marinelli? Because he's a punk-ass bitch. <laughs> he didn't want to fight me or wrestle me. He's a punk, man. He, he tried to come up with every excuse in the book. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I know Zach didn't want to um, break terms with them. He's an Iowa guy, you know. But I'll tell you what happened. So, I get, you know, first I'm supposed to wrestle, like, he offered me. Jesse Delvecchia offered me Kennedy Monday, you know. And I was like, man, I don't want to just wrestle um, those two guys wrestling, but I don't just want to wrestle guys that, aren't currently active. I was like, I want to come in and wrestle someone that's that's a really good wrestler or still currently active or has a fan base behind them or has name, you know? And um, I said, for like David Carr, uh, they he asked if I wanted to, and then boom, Marinelli's name popped up. And I was like, screw it, I'll do anyone. It doesn't really matter. 
and uh, we're negotiating the terms of the contract. And I'm like, look, uh, I want to do five minutes, um, or it's a five minute duel, five minutes. He was staying, and then it changed to six, and then we had agreed upon five, and then we agreed on 170 pounds as the weight, right? And for me, it really didn't matter what weight it was. Um, Marinelli, I guess, I don't know what happened with their negotiations, but they ended up coming to an arrangement. There was, everything was understood, 170 pounds, um, five minute match. Uh, our pays were set. Uh, we even had a, a donor come in from the Hawkeye Wrestling Club to, to a, a Fort Dodge guy actually to, to help fund the match to make it work for Marinelli because I already had accepted mine. And um, everything's good. Boom, we're ready to go. Start promoting it. Um, we start promoting the event. Excited. And then uh, Marinelli comes back and asks for a weight change. Um, up, obviously. He wanted to go up. He wanted to go up. And he asked, you know, if we could add more time. And uh, those are things that I didn't have an issue with. Um, but we had already made an agreement. Um, but I said, if that's what it's going to take to wrestle, then, then – that's what I'll do. And I guess they had a conversation about it and, and Marinelli went back to Tom Brands, talked to Tom about it. And next thing you know, he wants to double the money. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, you want double the money, dude. We're getting paid of, I'm, you know, I'm getting paid more to wrestle than I am to play, like a five minute match. So, I don't understand. You, you don't make this money wrestling, so what? you want double the money for what? You're not – it just didn't really make sense to me, and I think that he was kind of looking for any excuse in the book with the weight, um, with the time, and then with the pay. And I feel like he just didn't want to wrestle me. And, and, and it, it's very surprising to me because when I look at, at the Iowa Hawkeyes and I look at Tom Brand and I look at – Alex Ranelli, Spencer Lee, like these guys, they, I think of these guys that want to wrestle, man. That they, that's, all they, that's all they do. That's all they do. And then uh, for Marinelli not to want to wrestle and, and for Tom to kind of convince him not to wrestle is kind of like, it was weird to me. So I've been following him. He's an Ohio guy. Obviously, I'm an Ohio guy. So I've been following him since middle school when I did the OECs. Um, I've done all these tournaments, right? I've commentated his matches, been interviewing him since he's a middle schooler. And, um, I know the whole story. I know the whole deal. And uh, as far as like, I don't know, you know, you, what you just told me, I didn't know, but now I know, like, I know the full story, but here's my thing. Like you're saying anybody, anytime, anywhere, that's always kind of like been my impression of what Iowa wants to do. And I, I think you have the same impression, like anyone, anytime, anywhere. I think after they see this, that you might get a bonus match. I think they, <laughs> yeah. I, I swear to God, I will, after me and Ian wrestled, I will wrestle Marinelli first to five takedowns, first to three takedowns, no time limit, whatever he wants. And if he starts to get rough and physical, then we're going to get rough and physical, bro. Like now, and I was always a fan of the Hawkeyes. I grew up watching the old documentaries and the films yeah. when I was a child, until nine years old. And that's yeah. what I was told of the Hawkeyes. I've always been a fan of Tom Brands. I've always been a fan of Marinelli, but, but not anymore. I don't blame you because I think it would have been a great match. And the thing is, in a five-minute match, I'd like to consider someone like you a thoroughbred, right? You're, you're super talented. You won a, a title in a shortened version of a match. You know what I mean? You won, won a world title. It's not the seven-minute. There's no riding time. It, it was freestyle. You guys aren't doing that. Your rules now, there's a push out, and it's college rules, right? And it's a five-minute yeah. match. I think that they wanted it longer and heavier. Obviously, that plays to his advantage pretty – greatly in which you were into but obviously the impasse there then in the negotiations was the money i don't think you care about the money i think you'll go back they call it gravel road in iowa don't they go gravel road grass or gravel baby you get it done dude i love it right, i'm a huge fan you used to make us run those gravel roads all day <laughs> dude you went to iowa central didn't you yeah i used to fort dodge so yeah I, so you were that you were a juco national champ for for, for the dirty dodge right Bro, I lost to Johansi Mejias. I got thrown in the finals. You got beat in the finals? I was winning with 10 seconds left, and I got thrown by uh, Johansi Mejias, yeah. Um, I thought you were a champ. You're a runner-up, huh? Oklahoma. Our team won that year. Wow. 
Did you were you in PD three on the same team? Yeah. He won though. He won, yeah. Who all won on your team? You were because it's how many finalists you have is what you win by. How yeah. many finalists? Um, Pat, Pat, and then we had uh, JJ Alpha, who was a South Dade guy, and then we had Tyler Hoffman, who went to UNI. Okay, so four finalists. Yeah. Why is that program so good, dude? Why is Iowa Central so good? Luke Moffat. Luke Moffat. Yeah, he's a legend. He really, uh, he, I, 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 I was, I was a, a very wild kid. Now I'm a wild man, you know, and, uh, you know, he didn't take the wild out of me, but, but help me, help me be, uh, an immature, an immature boy into a young man. And, and he really does that for a lot of people. And, and he's a great mentor. And I think that's the reason why the program is so successful. So Luke Moffat, simple answer, short answer, Luke Moffat, Iowa central. Iowa Luke Hawkeye. Moffitt. The only Iowa Hawkeye I got respect for. I'll tell you that much. Man, I'll tell you what, this, this, uh, we're gonna, it might be gravel road. I'm kind of fired up. Now you're getting me fired up. I'm glad we're doing this because I think there might be a mob of them that shows up and it's going to be awesome. And here's what's going to happen. The Millers might have to have Richie Lewis's back after the thing. And then we're going to be, have to go gravel road and take a whooping with you, dude. I, <laughs> you got to, you know? Uh, dude, you are so New Jersey. I love it. Hey, I just got a full dose in New Jersey. Where are you from in Jersey? Uh, so Edison, South Amboy, and I went to high school in Tom River. Tom River, did you say? Yeah. How far, is, how far is that from the city? So it's like probably an hour and a half, but where I was born at and like kind of raised till I was like 13 was right by the city. Okay. Right over I, the I just got a soul-crushing dose of the Newark airport. <laughs> oh, I lived about 20 minutes from here. Oh my God, dude. The Newark airport is a soul crushing place. One of my buddies yeah. is a cop there for the new New York, New Jersey port authority. And all I could just, I was just like, dude, you work at this place. He's like, yeah, I work here. It is wild, man. I couldn't believe it. First off, it's it massive. Secure. Second off the, the security measures for obviously Newark, um, Newark, New Jersey airport was a big part of what happened on 9-11. So like I show these documentaries and one of the planes took off from Newark. Okay. Yeah. So I understand that. I understand. But they do the, the, the layer of security at Newark is I've never seen it because I've done LAX. I've done obviously Chicago Air, JFK, all these other, I've done all these other airports. I could not believe the extra layer of security we had to walk through this like extra dog sniffing lane while we were in line just to show our ID with our boarding pass, you know, and then you do the scanning. Then they split, they split the bags. You know, the bags are on the conveyor and you go through either the body scanner or we walk through a metal detector. They split the bags and about every 10th bag just gets randomly gone through. Anyway, one of mine got gone through. That's wild. Man. Dude, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is crazy. Then Richie, I got me one of them $37 breakfast steaks. Oh, I did see that. I did it see got that. me, dude. I was so sad and bummed out. And there was like jockey marks on it. I was pissed. Where'd you go? <laughs> Where'd you get it? Oh, dude, I got the name of it. Up to, I screenshot it, it. Let me guess. Hold on. Let me guess. Was it, was it as soon as you walked down to the stairs, there's a bar in the front and on the right side, there's a restaurant. Right That's before. it. That's it. That's the place. You go down a ramp. Right you're, literally, you just nailed it. That's right it. Now. And you, you order off of a uh, little diner like, style. It looks a little diner style, yes. but it's like a little nicer. That's it. Dude, soul crushing. Like just, I was like this place. Oh my God. And then I asked, um, I saw some New York, New Jersey Port Authority people, uh, police officers. And I walked up and I was like, oh, hey, is my college teammate. I said his name. Is he here? Because he's from Garfield, New Jersey. And um, they're like, oh no, he's on some special detail or something. And I was like, oh, okay. And then, um, actually I landed, I landed the morning of final X, which was a Wednesday when I landed, he was there at the airport and then he left cause he's done some special unit. I don't know what the unit is, whatever he's doing. Um, he went into Manhattan and I went into Manhattan. We were in Manhattan together. It was bizarre, you know, but Manhattan's not small people. People think, Oh, you were in, you're in, 
New York City's huge. It's not easy. It is, but it isn't easy to get it out around when you're like a, a country bumpkin hillbilly like me, right? Yeah. You, you'd get around. You'd be fine. You'd be like, oh, no, you take this train to that. No, oh, it's, it's five minutes away where, you know, I'm, you know, I'm this guy looking around at the tall it's buildings. I don't know what the hell's going on, right? You know it's what I mean? Yeah, it's like the, the, the kid from the, the country shows up to the big city and doesn't know what's going on. And I was like, all right, man, I'll try and catch up with you. But I didn't. But that, that dude, Newark Airport, is, it's a wild deal. I'm glad that you, you literally nailed where it was that got me for 37 bucks for a breakfast steak. Yeah, they got me. They got me once or twice. <laughs> I should never get you though. You know the deal. Um, I just be desperate. <laughs> well, I was hungry, dude. I was super hungry, and I got up early, and it was. I didn't get to do anything in the morning in um, Manhattan because I was midtown. I stayed at the Renaissance, and um, I was trying to do like a walk in, you know, through Times Square or something. And it was pouring rain. I was like, screw this. I'll just go get you know because I almost missed my flight too there, and I was like, whatever. But Tell me what it's like growing up in New Jersey. Tell me about the strength of high school wrestling in New Jersey and what you what you miss about Jersey. Um, yeah, I think Jersey. I, I don't think I think we're a top five state, you know, in wrestling um, as far as output. But I think we're definitely the most influential state in the in the country in terms of wrestling, and I think we produce the the, the highest talent, man. Uh, I like my high school. Um, wrestling team club when I was at short thing and at apex Damian Logan was my coach and uh man we had me Ashnall Nick Soriano Shane Griffith BJ Claggin Lenny Richardson uh the Gagans like we'd have 20 30 national like Frank Cagnina like guys in a room in in the same day every day you know um and it's very concentrated and then if you go down the shore it was the same thing, you know, just an hour away. <laughs> so, um, and the coach, the coaching level is like, like uh, super high there. A lot of that actually has to do, um, I believe, with Ernie Monaco. So it's funny because I was never coached by Ernie. He was the, he's the guy who owns the edge. Um, but I was coached by a lot of his coaches, you know, Damian Logan, um, Donnie Pritzloft. Is Damian a Michigan guy? Yeah, all American at Michigan. He's a Garfield guy. Michigan. Okay, and then so Garfield owns and runs the Edge, correct? And then Ernie is at the Edge. Yeah. Okay. And then and, but now the Edge is also the does the NYCRTC. That's right. That's right. But it's in Hoboken, right? It's in Hoboken. Yeah. Okay. So the King, that you know, for most people, if you know, because we'll get some crossover. Some people who like you as a fighter, they'll watch this. But the King of Wrestling in the world, one of the all-time greatest in the United States of America in freestyle wrestling, Jordan Burroughs. He is from Somerset, right? No, he's from uh, he's from the South. What he's from he, he's from somewhere right next to Philly. He's close to Willingboro, close to James Green. I don't know the name of his town though. Okay, Windsor maybe. Eh. Okay, but they're both Jersey guys. James Green, Jersey guy, all-time great. Jordan Burroughs, Jersey guy, right? Yep. You got to claim them, bud. Come on. You got to claim those guys. Those guys are pretty good. Jordan's um, the goat, in my opinion. John Smith has always been the goat to me. And uh, I think I think Jordan's the goat now, man. Well, it's going to be. He's going to be because I think he's going to win his seventh world title and get that Olympic title. He's already got an Olympic title. Um, but, dude, you were a kid when he won in 2012. How old were you in 2012 when Jordan won? Uh, 16. You were, you were a kid. So you were at home watching Jordan Burroughs win an Olympic title, a Jersey guy. What was that like? It was pretty cool, man. I mean, I've, I've always been a fan of Jordan. Um, but really he just caught on that. He, he caught a lot of steam that year and it was just cool. I have a lot of pride in Jersey. I think we're the best state, obviously everyone from, from Jersey does, but it was good. Jordan has been pretty, pretty influential in my life. I look up to him and uh, I, I have had like small windows and small opportunities. He actually was at my fight, uh, my second fight. And uh, he came down for the week because he was doing the Olympic uh, commentation and that's down in Doral at NBC headquarters, Miami. So, and then I would see him at the Olympic Training Center and the small moments that I've had with him in my life, let's just say, five to 10 interactions 
but but in depth interactions um, have been extremely influential. Man, he's so smart, and the way that he thinks about things, and and like I'm a wild guy. Like he's like on the opposite end of the spectrum. You know, he's like humble and gracious and but still a hard worker and still a dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we have yeah. those similar similarities, but we also have the, the that opposite end of the spectrum. But learning um, how his brand works uh, has taught me a lot, and, and think how he works as a competitor and what he thinks about about effort, about tactics, about positions, a lot about how he carries himself. About I, I've even had conversations about him of how to how he loves his family and how, how he sees me and and like. He's just, that's why I consider him the GOAT also, you know? He's just a, an all around amazing guy, and, and, I, and I've learned a lot from him in a small period of time. Molinero's a Jersey guy. Molinero wrestled for the bronze in 2016. It, he lost to Chimizo, Frank Chimizo. Molinero, so Molinero was from the club that I went to in Tom's River, uh, short thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm a huge fan, but his match that he lost – for the bronze is the most proud I've ever been in a, a, of being an American in like the sports thing in a sports aspect, how hard he fought till the last second to try and beat Frank Chimizo for an Olympic bronze medal. I was just like, so proud of how the dude, the dude's effort is just unreal. Frank Molinaro just like, I was like, seriously, like, cause the most proud I've ever been in person was like, watching Jordan win an Olympic title in London, man. I was there. It was amazing. I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in person, right? And then, like, watching Frank Bonaro lose for bronze, right? He didn't win the bronze. He lost for bronze, but the effort was just due to he wanted it. He didn't get it, but, man, you could tell the guy wanted it. And I think Frank's a good good dude in all the interactions I've ever had with him. So, I, you know, I got to give Jersey guys a lot of credit. I was just talking to Donnie Pretzloff two weeks ago at the U 23s. And he told the story about wrestling one of my college teammates in college. <laughs> he wrestled Dolph Ziggler, Dolph Ziggler's in the WWE. Who's my college teammate. Donnie kicked the tar out of him in the like second round, round two. And my buddy was real funky. He's a St. Ed's guy, but he was a super funk master. You go to Donnie Ed's? Said, What's that? Did you go to St. Ed's? I didn't go to St. Ed's. No, I'm from Oak Harbor. Ian and I are from Oak Harbor, and then we got a nephew that Ian coaches. We're from Oak Harbor, so Northwest Ohio. So um, it's like probably an hour and 20 minutes from St. Ed's, but we're not, we're Northwest guys. Anyhow, um, Pritzlaff was talking about uh, wrestling my teammate in college. My teammate was real funky. And, you know, Donnie was just solid, just a hammer, you know, you know, he's your coach, right? Yeah, I wrestle him every day. Every day. So, you know, the dude's just a hammer. Well, he said anytime he got in the positions, he could feel my buddy trying to sit the corner, roll him through, or start a funk roll. He just released him and let him go. Like drilling. Like just drilled on the dude. If he couldn't get a clean takedown, he just shoved him away. At the NCAA tournament, just just smashing this dude. Just beating him up, taking him down, letting him go, taking him down, letting him go. Oh, he gave me a little resistance, clear out. That's actually, like, pretty smart, man, because a lot of these guys play into, like, crazy scrambles and doing all this wild stuff. A lot of guys, you know, they can't help themselves. They want to wrestle through a position. Donnie knew that wasn't his strength, and he knew this guy was trying to set the trap, and he wouldn't take it. I love it. I love those guys. Those guys are good guys. I like I like Goodale too. Yeah, Donnie. Donnie was Donnie has a lot of my respect, man. He's he's the first guy that I've really ever noticed myself um, becoming different around in terms of following him. Um, as a leader so the and, and he doesn't he doesn't ask and he doesn't talk much but but his presence and his energy um and his actions just demand respect so i'll tell you a funny story one time i was in the uh training room which is right next to our uh wrestling room getting some like ice on my knee or something and i'm laying there on my phone just hanging out and i'm icing my knee meanwhile so i have this whole big thing on my knee and I'm laying there slouching, and then Donnie walks in, and I'm up at attention. And I and subconsciously did that. I said, hey, coach, how are you? I wasn't doing nothing wrong. You know, I was just – but I, I – it's just crazy how, like, someone's energy can do that, you know? And it was a very common thing that, that you see around, around him almost in, in a militant way, and, uh, and that taught me a lot. 
you want to be better around Donnie Pritzloff is what you're basically saying. You want to be better. It makes you want to be better. Yeah, you know, I, don't, I wasn't going to let him see me slouching. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell me about Zach Bogle, Street League, Stalemates. Tell me how this came to be and how Richie Lewis got brought back into the wrestling world after, man, how, how many years? Is this your third year fighting? Fourth this year is, fighting? Right. Four, no, no, four no, years you've been out of it, face punching. Months. Say that again. I missed that. I've been training MMA full-time for 18 months. 18 months. Okay. And you've been out of wrestling for four years, right? Yeah, I had a really bad injury, so I had to take a year and a half off. That's why I stopped wrestling. Okay. So, coming back into wrestling, first match with the singlet on and, you know, a live match in front of a crowd in four years, Right. What, how did this come to be? How did you and Zach Bogle and Stalemates get together on Street League 3? Well, I'm just always looking for opportunities. Um, I used to be a guy that loved to win, right? I loved to win, but I didn't really like to compete. Um, and I didn't ever get really why. Um, I know I was really good, but I'd always get really nervous. And, uh, I'd always kind of like, hey, I'm just going to beat this guy. I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to wrestle. But I'd get really nervous and I would still win and it would be exciting. But I would, even after my match, I would have all this kind of like uh, anxious energy, right? And I think it's because I wasn't like doing everything correctly. So it didn't give me the complete confidence to go out there um, and compete. Um, and then as soon as I got this injury, you know, I, I remodeled the way my brain works. I'm like, I'm much more grateful for the opportunity and now it's kind of like I'm training the right way I'm doing the right things I have the right people around me I got the right contract um just just knows the tail I'm doing everything right and now I love to compete I got myself to a position where I feel personally that I'm so good at fighting I'm so good at wrestling I'm so good at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu I'm so good at boxing that I can do whatever I want. I'm a combat athlete. I'm not just an MMA fighter. Um, so once I got, once I put the work in to get to that point, um, now it's just about looking for the opportunity and to start looking for them. So when Zach announced that he was putting a card together, um, I just said, yep, throw my name in the hat. I said, give, give me a couple of whatever. I don't wanna re release my pay. Um, I'll, I'll go, depending against who it's against, you know, it will be a different rate. And he said, cool, let's do it. Here we are. And here we are. Okay. So what does training look like for you today? What was today's practice for you? Was today Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Was today boxing? What was today? Uh, today was just a sauna, an ice bath. <laughs> today was like a recovery day? Recovery day, yeah. Yesterday okay. – I'm going to wrestle tonight, though. And then yesterday I wrestled with uh, Mitch McKee. So you can wrestle – you can wrestle days back to back to back to back because, dude, it's so brutal. It's so brutal because you got to I, – like I just said, you got to train boxing. You got to train Brazilian jiu-jitsu, some Muay Thai. You got to do everything. It's like I don't think people get that about MMA. It's, it's a lot of different training because if you're deficient in one of them, Someone's going to find it, and that's where you're going to end up usually in a fight if they're a really good fighter. Is that, would you say that's a correct assessment? I say that's correct, man, but I'm on a really good developmental plan. Like, I don't really practice jiu-jitsu too much. I did jiu-jitsu with John Donner in New York City for about two or three years with, like, Gordon Ryan, Gary Tonin, Mickey Ryan, Key Rob, like, the best in the business. So I don't really do much now except for live training. Uh, I stayed away from wrestling for the past kind of year. Um, I just started introducing it again the past three months just because it's a natural thing that I'm never really going to forget um, and just focus on my striking. And now it's kind of like I'm mixing them, but it doesn't really matter what I'm doing. It more matters about going in and, and putting, putting the work in because I don't really decide much of what I'm going to do. My, I have like six different coaches and then I have a guy who manages my development. And it depends. So, like you're saying, wrestling back to back. I'm getting ready to wrestle Ian, who's a great wrestler. So I'm not gonna be boxing every day right now. You know, I just did a lighter transition where okay, instead of boxing three days a week, I'm gonna box two days a week, or we'll box lighter so I can wrestle more. So it's about like load and impact, and and we'll kind of just like work around it based on the competition. And like I said, I'm a combat athlete, 
So I'm going to be competing in different sports. So whatever sport that I do, I'll kind of do like a hyper focus on that for um, a short period of time. Do you have any promos to cut for Ian? Like I gave Jesse Delavecchia, I was like, hey, what, what bad do you got to say about Kennedy Monday? Of course, he's a nice guy. He didn't say anything. What? Give me, give me some, come on, give me some, give me a promo on Ian, what you're going to do to him. I want to hear it. Man, I love talking shit. <laughs> I asked. I love it, uh, and it's one of my favorite things to do because it's it's just a game and it's just fun. But Ian is such a good fucking dude, bro. That is like, and I've been a fan of him and like his style and shit. And I'm just ready to go to like wrestle, man. And 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 it's funny because you're talking to fucking Richie Lewis, and all I do is talk shit, even if it's for no reason. <laughs> and. <laughs> And I don't have anything bad to say about him, man. No, not bad. He didn't have anything bad to say about you either. I was trying to get him going. But I'm going to yeah. kick his ass. Uh, there so we go. We That's what I ready. wanted. That's what I wanted. Richie Savage is coming for you, Ian Miller. I'm coming for you, baby. <laughs> Those inside trips ain't working. I'll throw you right over that shoulder, all right? Dude, I love it. <laughs> and if you do beat me, you better be ready, dog. <laughs> okay. So... We're going to be there June 24th. It's the main event. I'm fired up, dude. I'm coaching against you. I know. I know. Coaching against you. I got to, I got to sit in this corner. I got to coach against you. But um, I'm just glad you thought that I saved the card. I didn't save anything. I didn't do anything. I he, thought that you're the one because I seen that. I seen. No, the no, I'm not the one. It's, I think Zach reached out to him or he liked the tweet. He actually told me, he said he saw that we were looking for a replacement whenever Marinelli pulled out. Hey, we're looking for a replacement opponent. And I think he liked the tweet and immediately Zach DM'd him. And I was like, hey, you wanna you wanna roll? And he was like, Yeah, I'll do it. And um what's cool about both of you guys is you don't really have to like crazy ramp your training up, I don't think. I think you're on such a steady, it's your lifestyle, it's how you live. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't think they're like you're saying you're hyper focusing obviously for a couple of weeks on it, but um as far as you know, you don't have to change anything. This isn't anything where you've gotta like fast and cut weight and do the psychology you know what i mean you're just gonna go out and do your thing that's what i like about it taxing on the body it's a fun match you know like the marinelli match it was it was much more serious it was, this is serious obviously i'm thinking serious but but the marinelli match was like i'm gonna go in there and like like it was like i'm dialed and I'm, i want to kill this guy you know what i'm saying and i feel like this one uh just release so much tension and it's like this is gonna be a fucking awesome match you know we're both high flying wrestlers we we both have high output we both know how to scramble um yeah it's, it's gonna be fun man i'm excited goal one more time i want the goal for richie lewis and mma i call it face punching what's the goal where are you gonna be in three years uh in three years i'll be a ufc champion ufc champion 155 pounds Yes, sir. And in five years, I'll be uh, I'll be whooping uh, some boxers' asses. Then it's the boxing. Yeah, and wrestling. And in wrestling, we could see you back for more of these. I may or may not have a passport in another country. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. What's your, what's your other passport? To be announced. To be a TBA. <laughs> to be announced. <laughs> I'll take it. You got anything else for me, Savage? Nope. Let's go. Stalemate Street League 3. Richie Lewis, the best to ever be. Y'all going to see it. Thank you for the time. June 24th, we'll see you main event. Richie Lewis, Ian Miller, Stalemates, Des Moines, Iowa.